Hello and welcome to lesson one in the warehouse management configuration course. This session is an introduction to the warehouse management module. In this session, we'll have an introduction about the warehouse management module, then an overview about the typical process flow in the warehouse, then we'll review the common rules in the warehouse, and then we'll review some of the main terms that are usually used in the warehouse management module, and that considered as the building blocks of the warehouse management module. Let me first ask a question. Do you believe that the inventory and warehouse management are the same? The answer is no. However, both running side by side to ensure the business continuity and streamline the supply chain management process, but indeed they have some differences. So the inventory management involves keep tracking of the company stock in post quantity and value levels, also maintaining accurate inventory records and ensuring sufficient safety stock either for the manufacturing or for the sales process. Indeed, this will help the decision makers to know when the time to replenish the product or buy more materials to satisfy the demand. But the warehouse management refers to the various process related to maintaining and controlling the warehouse operations, like item receiving, internal movement, picking and packing operations. In addition to that, managing the warehouse space, like the racks, levels, and bins. So basically, we can say the difference between the warehouse management and the inventory management in a nutshell that the inventory management involves tracking of the stock levels in quantity and amount. However, the warehouse management involves tracking the process and the warehouse itself. The warehouse management module in Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management helps the organizations to optimize and streamline the day-to-day -day warehouse process from the moment when the goods are received at the warehouse till the moment they will leave. The warehouse management module is fully integrated and has lots of integration points with the other SCM modules. So here we can see, for example, not as account, the warehouse management module involves with the inventory management module while processing the internal movement transfer, stock adjustments, replenishment, and the cycle count operations. Then, in the product information management module, where you can define the item handling unit of measures and the reservation hierarchy. Then, in the procurement cycle, while processing the purchase order receiving and put away, and the ASN or the advanced shipping notes and the load receiving. Then, with the landed cost module, while processing the goods in transit orders, then with the sales management while processing the order picking and packing operations. Then with the production control module and the manufacturing process where you can process the raw material consumption and the finished goods and put away works. Last but not least with the transportation management module while processing the load management and the driver check-in and out activities. As you can see, the warehouse management module has a wide range of functionalities to support the warehouse facility at an optimal level. I summarized the main topics in the warehouse management module into the below groups that are commonly used day by day. These terms are indeed in Dynamics 365 supply chain management terms. However, somehow this is almost the same terms that are used in the real business. In this course, we're going to complete the core configurations and the prerequisite setup of the warehouse management module. Then in the warehouse management process course, we're going to demonstrate each process in detail. The first process is the inbound material flow. And basically, the inbound material flow is the way where the materials are brought into the warehouse. A typical inbound flow is the purchase order process, where the process begins by receiving the goods at the incoming docks, then to move the inventory to the final put-away locations. In the outbound process flow, the goods are leaving the warehouse. A typical outbound flow is the sales order process, where the process begins by picking the items from the warehouse location, then moving them to a staging area where it's going to be packed. Then it will be loaded into the trucks to be shipped to the customers. In the manufacturing company, you can also process the raw material consumption and the finished goods put away. This is somehow also part of the inbound and the outbound flow. Then we have some internal operations like the internal movement between the locations or transfer across the warehouses and inventory adjustments in and out if required. Then we have the replenishment process and this is the process where you can replenish or increase the on hand of the picking locations or any other locations from the bulk locations. Then we have the quality management or the QMS process, then the packing operations and this is the step where the items will be bagged before shipping to the customers. 
and Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management, there are two kinds of packing operations. The first one is the manual packing through the pack station, and the second one is more automated and it's called containerization. Then we have the cross docking and the cycle count operations. Typically, many users are involved in various phases of the warehouse management process. All users should be assigned to rules in supply chain management by the administrator users to control the access to the system. These are the standard rules of warehouse management module. However, this is still could be extended by granting or evoking permissions to match the company requirements. Before working or implementing the warehouse management module, you should be aware of those important terms. Personally, I'm considering those terms as the building blocks of the warehouse management module. The first term is the shipment. The shipment is a single delivery to the same customer and the same destination. The shipment could be one or multiple sales orders. Then we have the waves. The wave is one or more shipments that represent a group of order lines that should be released to the warehouse at the same time for picking. Then we have the work. And the work is the transaction that performed by the warehouse workers to complete a specific business process. So for example, you may have a work for the purchase order receiving or another work for the sales picking process. Then we have the load. The load can have one or multiple shipments where a shipment can have one or more sales orders that group together and typically that are going out on a single truck. So we can see the load is the object that have the items and where the shipments will be carried into the customer, like physical container, parcel, or a truck. Now let's talk about the release to the warehouse process. So the shipment, the wave, the work, and the load. These documents are either created or processed with the step of release to the warehouse. The release to the warehouse is the process where the orders will be sent to the warehouse for processing. Now let's connect the dots together and see a simple one-to-one -one relationship between the sales order, shipment, wave, load, and a work. And after that, we'll map each document with the required configurations. The process of release to the warehouse might be valid from a company to another. So this example triggers by the release to the warehouse option in the sales order form. So the process starts with the release to the warehouse action. The release to the warehouse action could be triggered in different ways. So this could be for a specific sales order from the sales order form using the release to the warehouse action. Or this could be for a specific load from the load form and using the periodic job of automatic release the sales order to the warehouse. We're going to cover these options shortly. When the option is released, a new shipment will be created or consolidating to an existing open shipment. The fact that a new shipment should be created or consolidating to an existing open shipment is managed by the shipment consolidation policies. The shipment here represents the single delivery of the sales order. Then a wave will be created to process this shipment in order to create the load and the picking work. This could be also a new wave or a wave that will be added to an existing open wave. The load and the work will be created when the wave is processed. And the fact that when the wave will be processed and if it should be added to an existing wave is managed by the wave template. After the wave is processed, then a work and a load will be created. Normally, the work will have two lines. The first one is to pick the items from a specific picking location so the user can easily identify where to pick the items. And the second one is the put line with instructions where to place the picked items. The work is managed by the work template and instructions on where to pick or to put the items are managed by the location directives. Then there will be a load like a truck. The load will be used to deliver the items to the customer. Using the load template, you may define the equipment or the objects that will be used to deliver the items to the customer. So we can understand from this process that the core configurations or the building blocks of the warehouse management module are the shipment consolidation, wave templates, work templates, location directives, and the load templates. And these are the configurations that we're going to cover in the next couple of slides. Now let's recap what we discussed in the session. So first, we had an introduction about the warehouse management process and how it's different compared to the inventory management process and how the WMS module is important for the business. 
Then we discussed from high level the integration points between the WMS module and the SCM modules. Then we discussed the process of release to a warehouse. So it will make sense later on when we came across these terms in the next lessons. And finally, we had a high level summary about the core configurations of the warehouse management module that we're going to discuss in the next lessons. Thank you for watching and your time. Please reach out if I can help. Take care and good luck.